Hey! Hey, guys! Don't you hear that alarm? Come over here. Come here. Come this way. Control room, this is Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, we have an alarm over at the chemical building. Are you guys showing anything on your end in the control room? Affirmative, Bob. Our camera in the chemical room shows a leak from a flange toward the rear of the building. Copy. Go ahead and initiate a hazmat response. Have the team members meet me just outside the gate to the chemical area. Copy that. Initiating a hazmat response. Hey guys, didn't you hear that alarm? Yeah, but it's probably just another false alarm. The control room just confirmed that we have an actual release. Let's start isolating the area and denying entry. I already have the hazmat team coming. We're on it, boss. Control room, this is Bob. Be advised, we've secured the area around the chemical building. Can you go ahead and silence the alarm? Copy that. Hi, Bob. Hey, Greg. What do we have? Uh, looks like we have a leak from the chemical building. We've moved everyone away from the spill and secured the area to keep anyone else away. Great. Was anyone exposed or contaminated? No, and everyone's been accounted for. We set up our initial perimeter based upon the guidelines outlined in our emergency response plan. I have to tell you, I'm so glad we reviewed that emergency response plan during our recent training. Yeah, I agree. That's why refresher training is so important. Anyway, have you requested a trained incident commander? Yes, Jeff is on duty today and currently en route. Look, I'll retain temporary IC until he gets here. That way, you can focus your attention on managing your hazmat team as they arrive. Perfect. Hey, be sure all responders have an escape route and all vehicles are facing away should this leak become catastrophic and we all need to evacuate. You got it. Hi, Greg. What's going on? Hey, Mike. Who else is with you? Gary and I brought the trailer. The others are on the way. Okay, let me brief you guys now. Sounds good. So it looks like we have a leak from the chemical building. The first responders isolated the area and got everyone away from the spill and initiated a hazmat response. Bob is currently retaining temporary IC until Jeff gets here. I'll be the group suit. Meanwhile, we'll be getting set up for an entry. I'd like you guys to be the decon team since that typically takes longer to get set up. That makes sense. I want you to set up the decon just outside the exclusion line, and once the decon's all set up, tape that area off as the warm zone. What type of decon setup did you have in mind? Let's go with our standard three pool decon setup. After it's all set up, go ahead and prepare for a level B decon operation. Okay. Will we also be the backup team? No, we have enough hazmat team members here today. You guys will just do decon. Great. Okay guys, the control room has confirmed via video we have a leak near a flange from the rear of the chemical building. We're going to go ahead and make a level A entry to see if we can stop it. Gary and Mike are setting up a three pool decon right outside the hot zone and they'll be conducting the decon in level B PPE. Who's up for making entry? I'll go. Me too. Great. Jack and Frank can be the backup team. Okay? Alright. We're not exactly sure if the flange is leaking or a pipe near the flange. So start by just closing the valve and see if that stops the leak. If not, see if you can figure out what is leaking and we'll go from there. Everyone good with that? Works for me. Roger that. All right, and unless anyone has any questions, go ahead and get ready for your entry and we'll do a pre-entry briefing when everybody is half suited, ready to go. Oh, by the way, Bob, is the interim IC until Jeff gets here.
Hi, Bob. You're the interim IC, right? Yes. You're the trained IC today, correct? Yes, I am. You got a briefing for me? Sure. It started with an alarm from the chemical building. I immediately started isolating the area and denying entry around the building. Great. Did you reference the emergency response plan for your isolation distances? Yes, that really helped. I then contacted the control room and they verified by the video camera a leak from the flange towards the rear of the building. Is anyone exposed to the release? No. We initiated a hazmat response and have seven hazmat team members here now. Greg is the hazmat group supervisor and his team is planning a level A entry with decon and level B. So how long before they're ready to make entry? Greg said they'd be doing the pre-entry briefing in about 10 minutes, so right after that, if all goes well. Who's doing the site safety plan? Greg is. Okay, anything else I should know? I had the control room silence the alarm, but left the flashing red light on. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and formally assume command. I'll let Greg know so he can tell his team. You got it. Me and my guys will be on scene if you need something done or need help with anything. I think we're good with me and the hazmat team. You guys can take off now. Okay. Okay guys, everyone should be ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and conduct the pre-entry briefing using the site safety plan. Once this briefing is done, we'll immediately start our first entry operation unless we discover any issues during the briefing that need to be addressed. You all know Jeff, He's assumed the role of IC from Bob, who was one of the first responders. He's given me some entry objectives that we'll discuss in a few minutes. Jeff, is there anything you want to say to the team before I get going? Just take your time and be safe, guys. Great. Just so you all know, stopping the leak is important with the safety of this operation being the highest priority. Again, just a review. The leak is coming from the chemical building behind me. Our first entry objective is to identify the exact source of the leak and stop it if you're able to. If during your entry you're unable to stop the leak entirely, do as much mitigation as you can and you will brief the next entry team on how to continue building on your progress. Tom, your entry one. Barry, your entry two. Jack, your backup one. And Frank, your backup two. And Gary and Mike will be our decon workers. Now let's talk a little about the hazards of this chemical. All right, now let's talk about emergency procedures. First, I should not need to remind both of you to stay in line of sight of each other during the entire entry operation. Also, be sure to communicate back and forth often during your entry operation in order to keep an eye out for one another. If either entry team member has any sort of emergency situation, be sure to tell the other entry buddy immediately and radio to me the nature of the emergency. At that time, we will shift our priority from the entry operation to the emergency at hand. I will activate the backup team to assist with whatever is going on if they are needed. Remember, the goal of the backup team is three people now helping the one person with the issue. I will also have decon standing by ready to conduct decon. And if needed, I will contact the IC who will activate the EMS system. The priority for decon obviously is the entry team member with the emergency, then the other entry team member, followed by the backup team, and lastly the decon team. Backup team, do you have our sliding stretcher ready in case one of the entry team members is non-ambulatory and needs to be dragged out of the hot zone? Yeah, it's standing by. Great. I'll let you know if you need to bring it in the hot zone when I activate you. Okay, sounds good. If we lose radio communication with the entry team and need to evacuate them from the hot zone for whatever reason, I'll have the control room resound the alarm. At that time, the entry team and decon team will both proceed to decon. And if we need to evacuate from the support zone, we'll reassemble outside the control room. We'll regroup at that time and go from there. Does anyone have any questions about any portion of the entry operation at all? Okay, do you all feel confident in our plan? Let's do it. Let's get these guys on air and go stop that leak.
Be sure to get some readings before you go in the building. Okay, just crack the door and I'll get some reading. I'm turning off the O2 alarm. Looks like it's 2% LEL and 18% oxygen. Copy, 2% LEL and 18% oxygen. Is it safe to make entry? Affirmative. Go ahead and make entry, but exit if the LEL exceeds 10% at any time. Copy that. Let's go. Okay, we're inside. We're inside the chemical room. You can see the leak. Just close that valve. Just turn on the valve plan. We're closing the valve. Ah, closing the valve now. Valve is closed. Leak has been stopped. Good job. Proceed to decon. Valve is closed. Leak has been stopped. Good job. Proceed to decon. Copy. Proceeding to decon. Please activate the decon team. Activating the decon team. Decon team, go ahead and get ready. The entry team's on their way out now. Okay, be right there. Yeah, the seal's flown. Copy. We'll let Greg know when we get out. Let's go. Be sure to decon the person with less air first. Copy that. Are you both feeling okay? Feeling good. I'm good. How much air do you need to? 1300 PSI. 1500 PSI. You go for decon first since you have less air left. your boots. Let's get your boots.
Okay, guys, the reason we've asked you all here this morning is so we can conduct a PIA, post-incident analysis. That's a critique of last night's hazmat incident. The intent is not to place blame, but to focus on what went well and what areas that we can improve upon next time. Each of you will get the opportunity to briefly discuss your role and what you learned from the response. We'll go in the order of arrival, so Bob, I think you were first on the scene. Let's start with you. I was walking near the building when the alarm started going off. Something I think we need to remind everyone of is that even though we do have an occasional false alarm, it is important for everyone to treat every alarm as if it were real, until proven otherwise. Why do you say that? Well, we had at least two people in the area that just assumed it was another false alarm. Oh, I see. I'll have a safety bulletin sent out to remind everyone to treat all alarms as if they're real. Although, once they both realized it was an actual alarm, they greatly assisted in isolating the area and getting the response started. Great. All we really did was confirm the release, isolate the area, account for everybody, and initiate a response. Oh yeah, I had the control room silence the alarm so we wouldn't have to deal with the sound, but kept the flashing light on in case anyone wandered into the area. Sounds good. The other first responders with you were Brian and Johnny, correct? Yes. Do either of you have anything to add? Just that I will never assume an alarm is a false alarm ever again. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, let's move on. Greg, I think you are on scene next, right? Yes, that's right. I arrived and got a briefing from Bob on what was going on, and I took the role of hazmat group supervisor, and Bob retained command at that point. We both agreed that I would get the hazmat team ready for a level A entry operation as quickly as possible. Because you knew you had a leak, right? Exactly. The control room had already confirmed the leak via video. As my team arrived, I had them start setting up decon first, since that usually takes longer to set up and I immediately started filling out the site safety plan. Good, that's good. With six hazmat team members, I was able to have a backup team separate from the decon team, which really sped things up. Tom and Barry made the entry and were able to close the valve and stop the leak. Tom, Barry, how'd things go for you? Pretty straightforward. We monitored at the door before we entered and the LEO was less than 10%, so we were able to go in and shut the valve to stop the leak. Yeah, and once we stopped the leak, we could see that the seal had been blown. That's been fixed, right? Yes. After the room was vented, the maintenance folks replaced the seal and put us back online. Great. Anything else from the entry team? No, I'm good. No, sir. Okay, Decon, you're up next. How'd it go from your standpoint? Pretty cut and dry. We deconned Tom first since he had less air than Barry, but really, there were no major issues. Having us set up decon early was a good move. I agree. Anything else from either of you? No, that's all. No, nah, I think that's it. Backup team, you weren't activated, but do you have anything to add? It all went pretty well from my standpoint. Me too. Okay, well, unless anyone has anything else, we can wrap this up. Sounds like everything went pretty well. We just need to remind all our employees to treat any alarm as if it's real and not a false alarm. I want to thank you all for coming. Nice job last night.